the sea, the big, beautiful wet one, the old salty lad, the chilly dip, the infinite bath, the rolling, rollicking puddle of dreams. You know, sailors have historically given this body of water many names throughout the years. We now, of course, just know it as the sea. But even beyond that, inextricably humans have a direct link to this incredible phenomenon. And the fact that our bodies on a molecular level are 61% composed of salt. And if you're looking to get extremely salty with a sea-themed game, then Oceans, provided by North Star Games, might be exactly what you're looking for to tickle your sea cucumber. In this game, you'll be creating new life in an underwater world, developing symbiotic relationships and rivalries with your neighbors, and collectively eating more fish than a blue whale who's had two large glasses of Pinot Grigio and thought, you know what, I am done with this diet. You'll keep eating and eating until the reef is completely empty and then the ocean is completely empty. At which point someone will then win by having the most fishy counters hidden behind their little cardboard screen, a show of their personal prowess in maintaining a variety of underwater species. On your turn, you're gonna be playing one card and with that, you're either gonna create a brand new fishy species and put a little population track next to it, or you're gonna use one of these cards to perhaps buff up one of the species you already own by giving it a new trait or skill. You've got creatures who forage, nibbling on the edges of the brightly colored reef, and creatures that feed themselves via the mysterious magic of symbiotic relationships. For example, maybe every time the creature just to the left of this one gets fed, this species gets to take free food from the ocean. How does that work in real life? Ah, it's complicated. It's kind of like underwater tax evasion. And at the end of each of your turns, all of your species, not just the one that you chose to activate, is going to age. And that happens by you simply taking one of the population off and putting it into your little score zone. The issue is though, if at any point you have to age a species, but you don't have the population to do so, then that species is gone. It's, it's, it's dead. At the same time, if you ever reach the top of this scale and hit a point of overpopulation, then disease becomes a problem and you need to keep chucking some of those fish back into the reef or the ocean until you only have five left on your sheet. As Paul Simon famously sang, there must be 50 ways to put an endo to your underwater friendo. But never fear, you do have a variety of tricks up your sleeve. Yes, as I just mentioned, you can only activate one of your sea creatures during your turn, which is not ideal. However, let's just say that maybe we start a new species on the other side over here, specifically to leech off of this community and stop it from getting out of control. This one munches up loads of stuff from the reef. This one gets free food just by tagging along. And then this one neatly controls the growth of this species. And your reward for all of that, three points. One for each species that just aged. Ooh, that is the zen satisfaction of a well cod liver oiled engine. But hang on, we've got a problem. Sometimes in the ocean, the big ones eat the little ones. It's a phenomenon that scientists call bullying. And unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. And this little red symbol that you're gonna see on some of the cards means that these fishies get their tasty little dishes by chomping on down on other fish. And because most tables are round, although not, not this one as, as far as I'm aware, you are gonna be playing this with other people. And that means that other people are gonna be coming and eating up the population of your fish. Uh -huh. This means that at any point, your perfect system might just be disrupted with a sudden cartoon shark shaped hole appearing within your otherwise neat and tidy food chain. 
It also means that when cards talk about species to the left or to the right, or ask you to check for the nearest instance of something happening, that extends beyond your play space and continues around the table. So you aren't just attacking each other directly with predators, you're symbiotically working with your neighbours sometimes, uh, or just leeching off their successes in a way which is honestly not helpful right now. Now this game might look familiar, being an underwater spiritual successor to a game called Evolution, a game we published a written review of six years ago. Six. Crucially though, beneath the fascinating surface, it just didn't have the tactical crunch that we were really looking for, until you added in the Flight expansion, which we also covered in that written review, although arguably that is the point where the review quickly devolved into just Quinn's sharing loads of pictures of birds. Is this about those bird photos? I just want to say, it was a long time ago, and I have no regrets. And for the sake of due diligence, we'd be remiss not to mention Evolution Climate, a standalone expansion sequel, which came out in 2016. It improved on the original in a number of ways, and I don't think we ever covered it or even played it. That's because it was a game about climate change. And as we all know, weather is a hoax. I'm sorry about this. I thought we had this cleared up before we start. Quince, uh, what's this? C is... C is for... Lies. Okay, sure. Oceans, though, is an improvement over the base game of evolution in almost every way. The production quality is absolutely fab, but more importantly, the scope of this box is both more constrained whilst also being much more expansive, setting itself solely within the niche of the sea, which seems ridiculous considering the sea makes up 71% of the planet, but it still feels somehow like this is just a, oh, it's a nice little niche thing. But actually within this wet niche, there's a lot of things to toy around with. Firstly, this ocean tray is split up into three different types of depth, three different flavors. You've got cool original, nice and spicy, and extreme heat wave. One of those was knickknacks. Not gonna give you a prize for working out which one. It's, it's not a very difficult puzzle. But what's this hidden underneath these little cardboard fish? Why? That's right, YouTube. It's your boy, the Cambrian Explosion. A mysterious and very real event from our planet's history in which underwater life and new species just went absolutely hog wild for ages. Like, imagine throwing a house party and the guests won't take a hint and leave for 25 million years. And they're all fish. And you're a fish. And this analogy is made of fish sticks. Look, when this first shallow area of the ocean is completely cleared of fish, then bang, it's Cambrian explosion time, air horn sound. Air horn sound. Thank you. What happens? Well, this Cambrian party ramps up the pace of the game substantially, with each new species now aging twice as fast at the end of each turn. Now that's potentially twice as many points and a great encouragement to cash in and create even more new types of species. But it also means that, sorry Bertie the bad, bad bobbit, uh, it turns out that your existence is no longer even faintly sustainable. And to make matters even just a touch spicier, you can play cards from your hand instead of adding them as traits or creating new species to migrate fish from any one area into another, which means everyone might be sitting pretty knowing that the Cambrian explosion is coming in a couple of turns and then poof, I don't know where, you just womp it on everyone and everybody goes, oh, my fish are gonna die, if they speak like that. We've also got these two little cards beneath Ocean Zone 1 and Ocean Zone 2. And every time one of these zones is completely cleared of fish, you're gonna trigger this special effect at the bottom. There's a whole little deck of these cards, meaning that you're going to be able to mix up what's going to be happening in your games quite substantially. And a touch here that I really, really love is the fact that there's some symbols in the corners of some of these cards. 
giving you a sense of which of these cards is slightly fiddly or which of these cards is just slightly mean, letting you put together the kind of game that you want to play, whether you're playing with geniuses or bastards. And the final part of this rub that's going to chafe you like bad coral is the fact that these things don't just get triggered the first time an area is completely free of fish. They get triggered every time an area is completely free of fish, which means if you're feeling mean or savvy, then yeah, you can be playing cards for their migrate effect to be moving fish around in a manner which empties out zones multiple times. Truly, for your opponents, putting the piss into Poseidon. You know, at the heart of it, I think, just like with evolution, there's an innate cruelty here to the pace of the game. The way you have to react tactically to the ebb and flow of the environment in a way that's sometimes cruel, sometimes callous, but mostly just cold, which is a bit mean after you've given them names. Sorry, Steve. I think that the strength of this and why the design of both of these games fascinates me is that the cautious and careful way that you should be managing and growing your species is completely at odds with what you want to do. Who wants a hippo when you can have a hungry, hungry hippo? It is deliciously fun to make a terrifying predator, seeing the faces of your friends turn grey as they realise their ecosystem has simply become food. But often that greed will spiral too far, leaving hunters unable to keep up with their appetites. And as we know from the history of our own planet, today's apex predators are tomorrow's massive museum losers. Shots fired. When what feels like fun in a game is massively at odds with what the game wants you to do, that's something that commonly I would just describe as being a really big problem. But here, thematically, the hubris is so absolutely bang on that it's just wonderful. Having species just steamroll out of control with greed before choking to death on their own fumes. It's this dark energy that powered the glorious parts of evolution. And the same thing is true with oceans. But oceans takes that, that little heart, a little, a little shelly kind of thing in a shell, a gem, takes that pearl, it's called a pearl, and it absolutely turbocharges it. There's another whole deck of cards in this box. And this is not like the normal deck of cards. The normal deck of cards for the game is bigger, just, but there's a lot of duplicates in here. You know, it's a card game. The base game, it encourages you to play without any of this stuff for a little while. If you're just playing with family and friends who've never played before, just play the basic game. It's a fun, weird little card game with cardboard fish. But then we introduce the deep. The first thing I need to point out is that every card in this deck is unique, which is it's pretty cool. And secondly, it's all about the deep sea. Strange, wonderful, freaky deaky. We think about the ocean, the deep ocean particularly. Humans' imaginations of aliens and strange creatures have taken deep sea as the inspiration for an incredibly long time. But it's at the bottom of the ocean that we see how truly strange it can get. And the truth is there are many countlessly strange and horrible things at the bottom of the ocean that no one has ever seen. Apart from me, my special deep sea pipe. Oh, it's so fishy. Look, Oceans takes the strangeness of this extremities, but without being quite so gruesome and disgusting as that, and packs it into this chunky deck of absolutely unique cards, all of which do really cool things. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Again, you know, it encourages you play the base game. Don't touch this. Just play the base game. Keep it light. Keep it fun. Add the deep cards when you're ready. But for me, the deep adds what evolution didn't have. It adds that extra crunch that I was looking for. And I can't imagine playing this game without these absolute horrible beauties. These deep cards are basically really powerful abilities that you can gift 
to your species if they have a free slot, but you have to spend actual points that you've already earned behind your little window, which are knocked off the table. I'm gonna steal this players. They're not real player. I'm filming a review. There's a pandemic. I'm on my own. I don't know if you've seen the news, but you have to spend your actual hard earned victory points to actually put these things into play. So is it worth it? And you know what? I could talk about risk and reward and the fact that you're going to go, oh, well, you know, it's going to cost me three victory points, but think about how many victory points I could get. But, I, I, you know, I don't care. Listen, I, I every time I've played this game, I've done quite badly, okay? Might seem a strange thing to admit, but I have no problem with that. The reason I've done quite badly is because I love these things. They're really cool. They're really fun. And rather than doing the maths, I just keep putting them onto my creatures and I don't have many points at the end of the game because I went too far. And that's my favourite thing about oceans. I love the way it coaxes you into over-evolving your species in strange ways that will arguably leave them shunned and unsuccessful. Living in small numbers, at the dark, muddy depths of the bottom of the ocean, while the world above you just blooms and grows. I love the fact that this can be a game where you can realise that your economic engine has probably failed and just pivot to being a wild purveyor of genuinely terrifying hellfish from the deep. <laughs> Why am I like this? I mean, I, I, I was part of the generation scarred at a young age from playing Echo the Dolphin, but uh, I mean, maybe at heart, I'm just a big soggy git. Either way, Oceans is dreamy. It's simple enough to teach, but still a constantly challenging puzzle with a satisfying splash of variety and depth. Why am I like this? I can't blame Echo and the Dolphin for everything. These cardboard ocean enclosures are great and greedily grabbing handfuls of fish to feed your creatures is intoxicatingly simple but fun. And I adore the simplicity of the detail that if you're playing with two players, you just use the orange fish. If you're playing with three or four, well, just grab another color of fish for each other player. And you get to choose your color. Do you want the blue ones or the yellow ones? It adds texture to the game, but crucially, it cuts down on counting. It means the setup of the game is super quick. None of that, well, we need 46 fish. No, no, just, just colors of fish, done. It's quick to set up, it's easy to teach, and it is just a joy to share with people and to explore. Look at this weird fish. I shouldn't even play this fish, but I'm going to play it just to see the look on your face. Look at this fish. So there you have it, I think it's, probably quite clear by now that this game is solid. I find it really exciting. Evolution many years ago was just a game I really wanted to love, but I couldn't. Whereas Oceans, I absolutely can. You can see the love and care that's gone into it. And the deep cards just feels like one of the most generous and exciting things I've seen in game design for a long time. Also little cardboard fish. It's just so cute. I like it a lot. I think it's a really tight, dense little box. And again, Another easy recommendation from me, the resident member of Southern Down, who apparently gets really excited about fish. Ah, it's news to me. If you're looking for something a bit different, then we've got some other games you might want to check out. If you want a more traditional economic game that's a bit fillier than this, but crucially still involves a lot of shared resource space and fish, then Newsfood is pretty great. We haven't done a review of it, but you can check it out on this episode of the podcast. Da, 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 da. It's pretty recent. It's pretty good. Did you know the podcast is now weekly? That's just me doing a little fun advert there. The podcast. It's weekly. We also stream weekly. I'm going to stop doing this now. If you are looking for something that still has the same kind of soft aesthetics, but is still quite bitey, I reviewed a game called Silk. And I think that is a pretty neat little box. Also in the realm of things I have not personally checked out, but might be really good. We checked out Cascadia at R Shucks this year. That's coming out soon, and I thought that was pretty neat, and we've heard some nice things about God's Love Dinosaurs, and I haven't played it, but gosh, it does have some very pretty colours. And that's about all the reviews she wrote for Oceans. Like it. Very good. Very good. Good job. That's it now. Uh, there's some other videos you can watch now. If you want to watch some other videos, you can do that. It's your life. You've got to make these decisions for yourself. One day, Samuel. And uh, yeah, enjoy that. Other than that, peace out. Keep it fishy. Ooh, yeah.